stage? Are you ready to march for a free press? We're just getting the people onto the front banner now. There's going to be statements from our stage like this at Downing Street. We want to be as close to the MPs, as close to the Prime Minister as we can when we say, free Assange now, free Assange now. Five, four, three, two. Julian's imprisonment is the result of people with too much power who lost the plot, who got power thirsty, and are guilty. They know they're guilty and they want to continue to live their, their lives without any consequences for the crimes they've committed. This case is about whether state crimes can continue unpunished, unscrutinized. Julian's freedom is the only antidote. We don't have a, a, a decision today. Julian's life is at severe risk every single day he is in prison. He is a political prisoner. He is the world's most famous political prisoner. We know what happened to the other most famous political prisoner last week. That cannot happen to Julian. It cannot be allowed to happen. The world is watching. Julian has to be freed. I used to be uh, a British diplomat. I was in the Foreign Office for more than 20 years. My last post was as ambassador to Uzbekistan. And I, um, I blew the whistle over torture and extraordinary renditions because I, I came across that in my official capacity. I tried to stop it internally. I, I couldn't stop it uh, because they had a policy of torturing people back then. Uh, so I blew the whistle on that which led to me giving up my diplomatic career. And obviously, as a whistleblower, I then got to know WikiLeaks and Julian, and I've been cooperating with them ever since. I mean, the hearings themselves have gone extremely well. I, I was very pleased with the arguments put forward by the defense. So really unanswerable arguments on freedom of speech grounds, on the exposure of major crimes by the American state. These are uh, benefits to the world. Um, and for me, it will be very, very hard for the court to deny another appeal hearing. I think there will be another appeal hearing. As usual, uh, you know, they held it in a tiny courtroom, they restricted access, there was no freely available online access, there's no online access to anyone outside England and Wales. So, as usual, the government does everything it can to hide the case and hide the facts from the, the British people. 
Um, but the actual legal argument side, uh, I thought, went as well as could be expected. It's been much better, much better than we've ever had before. Public opinion has really changed on this, you know, because of all the campaigning. And, but a lot of mainstream media opinion has changed as people have come to understand the argument and understand that this is a debt to freedom of the press for the entire media, including the mainstream media. You know, if you publish any secret the Americans don't like, <laughs> they can haul you out and exercise you. Uh, so I do think there has been a major shift in opinion. And, and I think that will continue. I, I think we're on a roll. The most likely outcome is that he will be permitted a further appeal. Uh, it will be on limited grounds. They'll choose one or two grounds of appeal to allow him to appeal on. And that decision will be made probably in April. Then the appeal itself will happen probably in September. Then we probably won't get a decision on the appeal itself until this time next year. So I, you know, I, I'm afraid to say best scenario, we're probably looking at another year in Belmarsh, which is the least before we can get Julian released. And that's part of the plan, of course, for the authorities. They, they have him in maximum security business. So but the process going on and on doesn't worry them because he's where they want him. So but the process is for punishment. The solidarity we've received from a you know, tremendous community of support has been absolutely fantastic. I mean, um, and it, it reaches across the political spectrum, uh, and there are many really wonderful people who give so much of their time and energy. And that, that is why we have started to turn public opinion as a, as a result of a campaign uh, on many different levels that the people have been carried out. And so it, it really is uh, a great example of genuine democracy and, and public participation. There will be undoubtedly more actions like the one here today. I think we're going to be pivoting back towards Parliament and towards lobbying members of Parliament. We're going to need to up the campaign and increase campaign awareness in the United States because public awareness in the United States is really very limited. Um, so there, you know, there's a great deal more, more work to do and we'll, uh, we'll keep our heads down and plow on. Should the case be lost, you know, the threat to the future of journalism is, is extraordinary. Uh, it will definitely have a chilling effect that people will be terrified to publish secrets the government wants with help. But you know, journalism is changing anyway. Uh, and I think one important thing with this, and with other things happening at the moment too, as well, I, I mean, when it comes to the situation in Gaza as well, for example, people aren't actually learning the truth about what's happening from the BBC or CNN. They're learning what's happening from citizen journalists. And I think we're seeing a great advance of that, we're seeing a, a decay in the influence of what they call mainstream media, of old-fashioned media. And I think all this will lead to the acceleration of that process.